Welcome to take a look. Greetings, viewers. Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, doing another Skyrim video. Um, with potential Grand Theft Auto coming out in, I would say, a month if you are watching this video, I might be switching over to do some videos on that. Um, before that, I might be switching over to Valhalla. But I do have plenty of Skyrim footage to do here, and so I'm going to continue forward. This is the mission. You have to find the um, Horn of Jurgen Windcaller in order to progress in the main mission. And you have to go to the ruins of Ustengrav, which they're not that hard, but they can be potentially problematic. So let's get on with Ustengrav and finding the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. You first come upon Ustengrav. If you haven't already found it while exploring, you're going to be attacked by bandits. And they're relatively easy to fight. Uh, you got to stay out of the magic user's uh, range ability and try and close in. This is why damage magic or electrical shock is good in Skyrim. Put it on one of your weapons, at least your hand-to-hand -hand combat weapon, because, yeah, you run into a lot of magic users, and even though their spells might not be doing a lot of damage, as you're trying to close in, if they're hitting you with ice, yeah, you're going to lose stamina, and they could actually really kill you, even if you have a lot of health. So, walk around Ustengrav 2, and there's a lot of death bell which you can use. And you find a dead bandit. Um, don't take anything that isn't enchanted. If it's gold or something, take it. In this case, there's a, a treasure chest, and there's no urns, so let's get into Ustengrav here. And any tomb, you're going to find dead bodies, you're going to find um, Draugr, you're going to find skeletons. It's pretty much a given. So I like to go first person and sneak through as best as I can. And in this case, you come upon some bandits who are using mummies, or not mummies, uh, undead, to mine the tomb. Feel free to grab a pick and help them out. I prefer not to sully myself with manual labor. There goes another one. Uh, we will rubble. Even dead, they're almost useless. Yeah, those necromancers were using um, dead bandits that they reincarnated as zombies to mine the tomb. And it's kind of interesting. As you go through... You're going to want, want to, again, be very sneaky because magic users, um, yeah, they can be problematic when they're firing off spells. Even low-level damage can build up. Now let's see what's over here. Uh, healing potion, always good. Uh, in the chest, ooh, yeah, some nice stuff. Let's search the ash pile lock picks always good you won't really need pickaxes i mean there's not enough ore in the area to be worth mining let's see what this necromage has and yeah again the necromage and the dwarven dagger mm -hmm. now let's go see 
I got everything covered here. Um, yeah, I'll just grab a pickaxe just in case. But this is where they were breaking in and mining. And you can kind of run through. You see a dead novice conjurer. Uh, you're going to come up real soon to a situation. The Draugr are going to be leveled in this tomb, and the more powerful your character, the higher level your character is, the more difficult they're going to be, and the better equipped they're going to be. To be honest with you, the humans are probably the weakest thing you're going to fight in this tomb. So I'm going to fast forward to the next important point. In this tomb, there's going to be some side rooms. Um, they're going to be loaded with burial urns and have shelving with potions and various other things you might want to loot right away because they will help you further on in the adventure. Again, these urns can have anything from gold to potions to even weapons. And if they have healing potions, those really will help you along the way. Gold, well, yeah, that's always useful, but you can't buy healing potions uh, in the tomb. And let's see, there's this treasure chest, uh, burial urn, yeah. Again, the potions are useful, but once you search out this side room, there is this other side room here. And you can kind of walk around and, again, empty the urns. I'm going to fast forward to another important part here. After you empty the urns in the side room and you come down this hall, there's going to be a uh, stairs down. On this table, there's going to be gold and plenty of it, maybe about 10, 15 gold pieces just lying here, and they're scattered amongst the tankards. If you pick up a tankard, who cares? Throw it away when you're done picking up the gold. I'm trying not to pick up the tankards. Now, over here is a hidden door, and there is a lever chain activation right here. And that opens this hidden door. And down this corridor here, you will come to the end. And there is a treasure chest. Ah, some gold, not a lot of stuff. I'm going to take a look around. You know, there can be a lot in it or not a lot. But you want to get to this hidden chest just for some extra gold if anything. Now you continue down the hall after you go back up the stairs and you're going to encounter some Draugr that you're going to have to fight. And again, they're level Draugr. They're not that difficult unless they're Draugr Scourge. <laughs>
Come to this area which overlooks the gallery in which you fought the Draugr. You don't want to overlook these potions of minor healing and this dra draft of night or whatever it is. And in the chest, gold, empty soul gem, not very good. I'm going to dump the ruined book in here. And what you're doing is you're crossing over the gallery in which you fought the Draugr. And you're going down to the next area, the Ustgrav Depths. And yeah, if I can open the door here. I love the fact that the Series X, super short load times. It used to be like 10, 15 seconds to load on the Xbox 360. Gotta love this. Now you come down to the Ustgrav Depths. And it's very interesting because um, you're going to want to use the bow and want to sneak like I do. Or you can play it however you want. But once you get here and you look, there's a Draugr. Easy enough. Take him down. But look at this. This is massive and expansive. And I'm going to fast forward until we get... To the next encounter. Now we're going to come into a hallway that's kind of a grand dining room. And I'm going to switch to Ebony Swords because, yeah, there's a Draugr here, very easy to take down. And one of the things you're going to want to do is there's Draugr patrolling across a bridge. And if I can snipe him or draw him out, then it's one less Draugr I have to deal with using my sword and possibly getting into a conflict. Let's see if I can draw him out here using the bow. But since you're in the hall, let's investigate and see if the Draugr returns. He hasn't returned yet. Again, I'm going to try and draw him out by firing the bow and clinking and making the arrow hit one of the walls. That's one of the ways. Ah, here he comes. And let's see if I can take him down, fire in front of him. Oh, yeah, a restless Draugr. He's stunned, and now he's down. Um, yeah, I'm going to fast forward through this because it's just a lot of picking up and exploring hidden stuff. When you come upon a pool of oil on the floor, that's not a good thing. What you want to do is ignite it, and it'll draw out anyone potentially, how shall I say, hiding or trying to pop out and kill you. There's some Draugr here, and then there's this interesting kind of barred-off room. I'm going to light candlelight, and I'm going to show you how to open this room here. Once I get my sword situation started out, you want to click this handle, and it's going to open the back gate. Now you got to open the front gate, and I'll show you where the other handle is. Right there on the wall, right here, you activate that handle. And then you got to take down this restless Draugr or whatever other Draugr is coming at you. And that was easy enough. Let's search the Draugr. And if I've activated the gate correctly using the other handle, which I did, I'm going to activate it and raise the front gate. And you have this little side room with an enchanter a potion, and a chest. This is an opportunity to do some enchanting, and you have a dagger there. Soul gem, let's see if it's of any value. And just some ruined books. Now we can do a little enchanting here and get the enchanting level raised up, which if you did my, or saw my video on dual armor enchanting, I've already got it up to where I can dual enchant, but add banish to any weapon 
and that will get your enchanting level raised. And if you want to put sneak on any footwear or carry capacity, again, that is the most expensive uh, enchantment, and it's the value of the enchantment that raises your skill level higher when you're enchanting. And banish is the one that raises you the most for any weapon. Sneak on anything is the most other than carry capacity on shoes or boots. Like boots here, I'm going to go down, fortify carry capacity, and right there, it raises your enchanting level high. So now I'm going to fast forward until the next encounter. We're down on the main floor. You're going to encounter skeletons. They're relatively easy to fight. And you're going to, there's a hidden room, which I will show you. But take down these skeletons here. Again, they're relatively easy. And, yeah, there's some podiums here which should have had potions on them, but they got knocked off. And let's see. Yep, this one has a potion on it. It activates nothing, so don't worry. And look at this. Guy is trying to take me down. I'll just blast him, and there you go. There is a hidden room, and this guy up here is pissing me off somewhere. But I'll show you where the hidden room is and some other really fascinating stuff in this uh, dungeon. Once I take care of this guy and boom, he's down. And I'm going to fast forward to show you where the hidden room is. Actually, in this case, I chose to go down. And so when you go down into the depths, you wind up, there is a word wall. And that word wall is going to give you a dragon um, word. I forgot what it activates, so let's see what happens here. Word of power, fade become ethereal. That's actually a really good thing to use when you're jumping off of mountains. Now you go to this waterfall, and behind this waterfall is a treasure chest. And, oh, a Draugr Scourge. Okay, a little difficult, but not all that bad. Uh, just keep hacking at him here. And, yeah, beautiful kill shot. He's down. Let's see what he has. Uh, some gold. And now you have a... Ooh, glass sword, and what's in this? Ooh, not bad. Iron arrows suck. You come out from beyond or behind this waterfall, and now there's an area where you can actually jump up. And let's see if I can get around here. Here we go. This is actually where. There's other hidden stuff. I'm going to go up here. And I got to go up another level here. And there you have another treasure chest and some potions. And there's actually some ore veins you can mine around here. Ooh, ebony mace. Forget the leather helmet. There is... Let's see... Where the ore vein is. There are some ore veins around here. Yeah, right here is a conundrum ore vein that you can mine. And that's why I bought the pickaxe with. You could walk around here and after you mined the ore in this area, discard it. But explore this area very carefully. I just showed you some hidden things. But again... Explore this entire area very carefully. I'm going to fast forward to the hidden room.
Now, in order to get to the hidden room, you're going to need Whirlwind Sprint. And you might as well keep it active because you will need it for the next part. And you jump up onto these columns, and this is where you Whirlwind Sprint across the air. Up, oh, I just shouted, damn it. Forgot to activate Whirlwind Sprint. I got to let this timer go down. And if you try and jump, you're going to, oh, this makes it. Okay. Now you're going to need Whirlwind Sprint. Once you get to the edge here, you point yourself at that column. You get yourself lined up here properly. And again, you're going to want Whirlwind Sprint. And you jump across here, turn around, let your Thum, uh, energy regenerate. It takes a little time. And yeah, I think there's a stone you can find that'll allow Thum energy to regenerate quicker or an amulet. And you whirlwind sprint here, you get up here, and then you walk across normally here. And there is this hidden room with a Draugr and a treasure chest. Sometimes it's not even worth doing, but there is the hidden room. I'm going to fast forward to the next major event. Now you get to this area and you have a skeleton easy enough to take down. When you come up to this top area, um, Ah, uh, bone meal is okay. I'm going to get rid of my ancient Nord arrows that I've been stuck with. And go over here. And there's, again, some urns with some gold, a potion, and more gold. Now, I told you you're going to need Whirlwind Sprint. That is what you use in this next, um, how shall I say, uh, puzzle. You got to run past these pillars, and as the doors open, up oh, you can't. You got to run past the pillars. The doors are going to open, and just as you get to the last pillar, you hit whirlwind sprint, and you will go through all those open doors. So let's see. Get lined up here, and I did it wrong. Ah, uh, it sucks. You got to. Run as fast as you can, and then hit Whirlwind Sprint. Nope, I'm going to screw around here a little bit. Start running and running and running and Whirlwind Sprint, and you're through. Hey, if you saw my character just get roasted there, this hallway has... Sensitive platforms that shoot up uh, flames. You want to walk on the side where there is uh, none of these decorations on the floor. I'm going to try and take down these giant spiders. And yep, one is dead. And let's see. Uh, this is going to be difficult. I'll see if I can, yeah, not get a good shot here. And yeah, let's see. Yep, I uh, got that one dead. There's going to be a larger one attacking you eventually. So I'm arming up with swords and running across these hopefully non active fire shooting buttons. And here we go. And uh, my arrow, I want that back. And yep, on this one, I want nope, no arrow. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, there's the giant frostbite spider. Take her down. If there's an egg sack, take a spider egg. Good for alchemy ingredients. A little gold there. Yeah, I'm just going to fast forward through to the next encounter.
this is the main room and someone has already been here. And this is where you get a note. But check out the burial urns and there's supposed to be where the horn is. But nope, there's a mysterious note. And I need to speak with you. Come rent the attic room in the giant inn in Riverwood. Anonymous. Yeah. Well, we will all know it's Delphi at some point. So she's taking care of these Draugr. And then the main, how shall we say, boss chest. Uh, she hasn't taken anything from it. There's nothing around here worth taking. I'm just working around exploring. Uh, again, you want to explore around every nook and cranny in Skyrim because they usually hide some stuff. And it's worth it. Now, before you move on, I'm going to go to first person view. Check out this urn. That's broken. So let's go into this room, which contains the boss chest and some burial urns which are up oh, there's this one has something and yeah first person view because there's gold lying on the floor here you want to pick all that up you want to get into the boss chest and eventually you want to get back to the giant inn and yeah not too bad here you want to get back to the giant inn and continue the main quest um, but this is Ustengrav, and again, not a bad rune altogether. You get a word that is actually useful, and you get, uh, some decent loot. So let's get out of here, and on with the main quest. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. If you enjoyed this video, Hit the like button. Leave some comments. And, yep, this is where you exit. There's this hidden door. You exit into the hall with a bunch of urns here. Yep, there we go. You've already explored them. So, yeah. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. Again, if you like this video, hit the like button. Feel free to leave some comments. I do respond to all comments unless they're spam comments, and I've gotten some of those. Um, if you like this type of video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, and you'll be notified, and they will pop up in your home feed. This is Ustengrav, and... I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by.